Hi everybody, welcome back to Drawing Faces on Fabric. I'm Lauren Volchek, and in this lesson we're going to actually start putting some colored pencil to the fabric. So by now um, you should have had time to make your little 4x6 pieces of fabric that have your fusible um, trans web fused to the back of them. What I want you to do, there's a couple of handouts. If you go, if you go ahead and pause um, this video and go back to the classroom, there's two downloadable files that I want you to have while we're working on this lesson. So while you're going to get those, um, I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera around to the back so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing from my drawing position. All right, so welcome back. Hopefully what you printed out was a, a sheet that looks very similar to this <laughs> that says the human face, and then a sheet like this. We'll deal with that one a little bit later, so I'm going to set it aside. We're going to start with this one, the human face, and um, what this is, the information that's on here is information about where features fall on the face because there's a very specific location where your eyes occur in your nose and your mouth. And once you have that information and you can you can lay that out on when you're drawing your face, you know, it's half the battle. So um, I'm just going to give you a little recipe for that and on this particular handout I have left blanks um, because when I'm working on something if I can participate in it I, it just helps stick in my head a little bit better and I learn it a little bit better so I'm going to work through this with you on the on the worksheet um, what we have up here in the top is just a sample drawing of the human head and where the facial features are located on that head now what makes up the head um, the shape of the skull is basically a sphere plus the jawline and your jawline is usually about a third of the size of the sphere. Um, it hangs down about that far and so to me that sort of looks like an egg shape and a lot of people will draw a face using an egg shape. I tend to exaggerate it a little bit and get I don't even put the square out the jaw and I make the chin nice and pointy, but we'll get to that when we're actually drawing on our fabric. This is just information so you know the basic shape of the face. Okay, now I broke, I broke out in this particular diagram at the bottom exactly where the features fall. So some of this may be obvious and some of this might be new news to you, but we'll just sort of go over all of them. So at the top it says the nose is blank on the face and the nose is centered. My red pen's kind of large, but the nose is centered on the face, in the middle of your face, vertically. Most people know that. Um, the next thing is your eyes. Where your eyes occur on the head is halfway down the head. So halfway from the top of your head to your chin is where your eyes occur. And a lot of people think that your eyes are much higher than that. But really, most of your face um, is forehead. Okay, now on here I say the width of an eye is blank the width of a head. So what I'm saying is from the tear duct to the corner of the eye, this width is one-fifth the width of the head. So if you divide across the head into five equal spaces, you'll get a temple at the width of your eye, then in the center one is the width of your nose, it's a little bit further down, but that's where it's going to fall. Then the next eye and the next temple. Okay, so the base of the nose is halfway between the eye and the chin. So your eyes are halfway down the head. Then from this point, halfway to the chin is the base of the nose. The bottom of the lower lip is half way between the bottom of your nose and your chin. So here's the bottom of your lower lip and it's halfway from the base of your nose to the chin. So that sort of helps you locate all of those things. Then as far as the mouth is concerned, the corners of your mouth are as wide as the pupils. So if you look right here, here's the pupil and you come straight down from that, you have the corner of the mouth. Now I don't always draw my lips as wide as that, but I usually draw my mouth line, which is sort of this dimple from here across the lip and over to a dimple. I, I extend it as far as the pupils. So all of that information sort of tells you how to 
lay out the basic features of the face. Let's see. I'm going to set this one aside and pull out the one that looks like this. What you have on this sheet is basically just the outline of the head that works for the pattern for our project. Here's our little project. Just so that you get your head the correct shape and size to fit in the pattern, this is the outline. And if you'd like, you can trace it and make a, a template plastic cutout of this that you can trace onto your little pieces of fabric. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna lay it down on a piece of my fabric that has my trans web and with the paper backing on it. And I'm going to use my little ultimate uh, quilter's ultimate pencil. And I'm very lightly going to outline this template. And hopefully um, you can see on camera because that's very light. But hopefully you can see how that puts the outline on there and you've got a place to start. Now I'm going to suggest that you use this diagram in the bottom to, um, to line out your facial features and I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to pull a light box in over here. You can also do this in a sunny window. Just um, use some masking tape to put your pattern and your um, fabric up against the window but for the sake of the camera I'm just going to do it on this light box. So I've got these facial features and they're lined out according to um, the little recipe that I gave you on that other sheet. This obviously doesn't look very realistic. This is sort of stylized. Everyone kind of takes on their own style and this is what my faces tend to look like, a whimsical face. Um, I'm going to lay this outline that I did from the template or you could just outline it from um, from your light box and I'm going to locate some of the features. So very lightly, because I don't want this graphite pen to muddy um, my face. Ultimately, I'm just going to very lightly put a few things in, like the location of the eye, the location of the nose, the mouth and the brows, etc. And then when I've traced all that on, it will look something like this. Um, it's again, like I said, very, very light on there. It just sort of gives you the landmarks for your face. So what I would suggest for you in this for this week in the classroom is to take um, some of your fabric that you've prepped on the very first one. Let me put the chin in here. I forgot that. On the very first one, go ahead and draw all of the features on there just so you're kind of getting a feel for what it is to draw the features on the face. And then on the rest, just simply outline your template plastic and give an effort to draw in your facial features using using this out this um, worksheet that we just went over. Okay, we do want to do a little bit of color this week. I'm going to move this light box out of the way and we're going to begin to color on this face. We're just going to put a little bit of, of flesh tone on it, try to give it a little bit of some shape and a little bit of shadow where the where the chin is. Whenever I get ready to draw a face, I like to um, have some references that give me information about what happens on the face, uh, an actual 3D face. So one of the things that I've started to do is I will collect um, magazine pictures of faces and I try to find the ones that are straight on because I'm drawing a face that's that I'm looking at straight on. So I want to know where the shadows occur. You know, there's a little bit of a shadow under the chin and where the highlights occur, where the face looks kind of whiter than the rest. Um, here's another a little bit darker skin tone, but it has great information as far as um, the shadow at the side of the nose, the side of the face, a little bit of white highlight on the chin and the nose and under the eyes. Um, this was a great one because this is a, you know, you're looking at the face fairly straight on, but she has her eyes almost closed. She's looking down. So that's kind of an interesting way to see what happens with the eyelids. This is sort of the opposite. She has her, her eyes looking up. And you can see how it completely changes the shape of the eye, the outline of the eye. I like to find um, ethnic faces as well because the eyes and features are, are different shapes. And that's just good information to have. And, you know, here, this face um, is one of my very most favorites because I think that this eye shape is just about the most beautiful I've ever seen. 
So anyway, you can begin to look for um, makeup ads or even dental ads, those kinds of things, to find some faces that um, you can use as a reference. All right, what we're gonna do, when I start coloring on a face, <clears throat> I usually start with a light color and build up. It sort of gives me a little bit of confidence just to start with um, something that's not quite so dark. So I'm going to come in here. These are these pencils are more of my um, lighter skin tones where I want some highlights and then I've got the darker browns for the shadow. The very first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to take my, I think this is terracotta, I'm going to take my terracotta pencil and I'm going to outline the face a little bit darker, but I'm using a skin tone color rather than that graphite pen, just so that I know where I'm going. And hopefully on the camera, you can tell that you can just see this a little bit better. And we'll do the neck. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna start with actually a lighter skin tone color, and I'm going to begin to color around the edge of this face and you know one thing that's kind of handy to do is up here where you're not you know we're going to cut this piece of fabric off eventually you can kind of test your pencils and see what they're going to do on your particular fabric because it may not look the same on on my particular fabric as it does on what you have at home so it's it's kind of that's kind of a good tip just to test it now what i'm doing is i'm just lightly sort of shading in around the outside of this egg shape which will naturally give, and, and I don't know, it's very, very light. I like to build up. Um, it, it seems really safe to start with something that doesn't look that much different from your skin tone. I'm gonna leave this center area alone because I want my, I wanna shadow the outer edges, make it look a little bit more round. Now that I've kind of gotten some stuff on here with my light peach, I'm gonna grab my peach and you know I colored out to about here. So this one, I'm gonna stay within that area. I'm not gonna go as far out. And you can begin to see how that, that brings some shading in. And you can begin to see the pencil strokes. Let me do one more uh, darker one, just so that I'm sure you can see it on the camera. So if I have, let's see, back to my terracotta, I'm going to go within my peach to get this shading around the edge. It doesn't matter quite so much up at the top, but you can use that you know, to practice with because you're gonna have hair that goes over that. But I don't really like this sketchy pencil lines that show on here. I like it to be a soft blended look. So I'll tell you how I do that. This is a little piece of my skin tone fabric that was left over after I made my little um, stabilized pieces. It's just about three inches by four inches. And if you've ever used a blender, um, you can, you know, they make great blenders that you can buy and you can blend your color in, but once you've used it on one color, you've kind of contaminated it and it's really only good for that color. If you move over to blend in the blue of your eye, you're going to get the skin tone mixed in there and it looks muddy. So I just take a little square of fabric and I fold it on itself several times and I just keep folding it until I get kind of a nub of fabric. And then I just use that to sort of scrub the fabric and you can see how that blends all of those sort of scratchy pencil lines out and it blends your colors together. Okay, so see how that's much softer? Um, one, one other thing that I wanna do is I kinda wanna give a little bit of shadow under the chin because we want this to look dimensional at the chin. So I'm gonna do a little peach under the chin and a little terracotta, and then maybe even something a little bit darker. I've got a dark umber. This is really dark, so I only want just a little bit of it. Just kind of under here as the shadow to make the chin stand out. So I can, I can come back to the same place in my blender since I'm still working with skin tones and kind of blend, soften those colors in there and see how that makes the chin look like it's coming forward a little bit. Um, if I were getting ready to do my eyes, I would re-bend this blender to another area and it's perfectly clean and ready to do a different color. The last thing I want to do on this face before we're done today, this is all we're going to do. We're just getting a little bit of color layout, figuring out where all our placement is was sort of the lion's share of the lesson. The last thing that I want to do is show you how to do the cheeks. And so I've got my decorator chalks that we talked about last time and I have my little eyeshadow brush. Um, 
This may fade a little bit by the time you're done with your face and we can come back in and, and enhance the cheeks, but essentially this is all it is. It's super fun and easy. I've got, you can tell which is my favorite pink because it's worn all the way down to the edge, but I like to use at least two colors. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of get some chalk worked into this brush. And a lot of times I will test this too because you know I wanna make sure it's not gonna come out blood red right off of the top, depending on your skin tone fabric, it'll show up a little bit more. So because I have my mouth drawn in here and I know where my eyes are, I'm going to go ahead and put some cheek in here. I don't really want my cheek to come up and touch my eyes. I'm just going to kind of pounce in a little bit of pink on each side. You can, you can pounce it in and you can do like a circular motion. It's pretty light. And then I'm going to get some of the other color and do the same thing. What happens when you layer like colors, um, you get more depth. So I'm gonna use more than one color. Okay, so we've got sort of, we've made our face look a little bit round. We've got a little blush on it. We can tell where our chin is and we're good to go. That's, that's you know, a really good starting point. Really great way to get your feet wet. And that's about all we're gonna do for today. For lesson two, um, we're going to begin working on the eyes. The eyes are my favorite. They're very complex, but I'll break it down for you in a lot of steps. So when in getting ready for, for next week's lesson, just make sure that you print out the downloadable file for the eyes and, and then have your um, all of your little sample face fabrics all ready to go up to this point. And we'll hit the ground running with eyes next week.